Hello everyone, welcome to today's tutorial from Easy SAP ABOP. Today I'm going to teach you how to install ABOP Git. So this tutorial is not going to be an extensive explanation of what ABOP Git is. Rather, it's going to be an explanation of how to install it. Just to give you a brief overview, ABOP Git is a Git client. Um, if you're familiar with version control, you'll know what Git is. If not, I highly suggest that you look up what Git is, uh, what GitHub is, and some other you know version control things in relation to Git. But we'll go ahead and show you how to install it. So, first off, what we need to do is open up a browser. Go ahead and just minimize this. Open up a browser. I'm going to go to the ABAP Git repository here on GitHub. This is where you go. This is the distribution of it. I'm going to scroll down, and this might be different. You know, this this uh, README file could change, but I'm going to go to the documentation. So docs.abopgit.org. Go to installation. I'm going to see here that I can download the ABOP code right here. I'll just right click on this, click Save Link As, save it as zabopgit.abop. Save it on my desktop for now. It should download fairly quickly. Then I'll go to SAP. I'll create a new program. We'll call it zabopgit underscore standalone. Click on create. I'll just call it abopgit. And when it asks me, well, oh, sorry, I have to do this. I need to assign it a type of executable program. When it asks me to assign it to a package, ABOP Git should only be used in your development system, so we can say local object. So once this program is created, we're going to take our code that we saved to our desktop. Um, you could copy paste it, but it's an awfully big file, so what you're going to want to do, oops, let me get rid of that, is go in here to Utilities, More Utilities, then go to upload slash download and upload. Then you're going to choose the ABOP Git file that you downloaded, which is just a regular ABOP file. It's a plain text file. Click on open. Then you're going to see the code has been populated here in the editor. We're going to activate it. And once it's activated, we can go ahead and run it. What I typically like to do is create a transaction code for it. So I'll just go to SE93 and uh, create a transaction Z ABOP Git. So it'll you know call this report. Uh, just create it like you're creating a regular selection screen transaction. And uh, that way you just have an easier way to go ahead and call it. So what we can actually do, I'll go ahead and open up a new window here. And we'll go ahead and go to SE93. And we'll create that transaction. So I just call it Z ABOP Git. We'll go ahead and say create. And then we'll just make it call our report that we just uploaded in SE38. I'll just give I'll call it ABOP Git. And we're going to say program and selection screen. And that program is going to be Z ABOP Git underscore standalone. And then we can go ahead and save our transaction. Again, this will just be a local object and our local package because we're not going to transport this to, you know, our quality assurance system or our production environment. So we can see our transaction is now saved. And if we tab back over, we can see that Zabop Get Standalone is now active. So we can actually test our transaction out. So we'll just do Z ABOP Git. And we see here we can choose online repositories, which is where we can have a Git repository online, either on a you know GitHub or from other some Git, you know, Git server. Or we can do an offline repository, which is where we just track it. Um, but we don't have you know, the, the GitHub repository or some online repository. So the biggest benefit of ABOP Git, of course, you can clone repositories to your SAP uh, installation, and you can then run code that other folks have packaged as a repository with ABOP Git. But one issue that a lot of people run into, let's just say I say 
Let's just do new online repository. Actually, I tell you what, I'm not going to go through all this. I'll just go ahead and show you how to solve this issue. But one issue that a lot of people have is they get an ICM underscore SSL error, something like that. And it's because they don't have the proper SSL certificates installed in their SAP installation. So if you get an error when trying to create a new online repository or clone a repository or any of that, what you need to do is go to transaction S trust. And this might be a, you know, a basis type function. So definitely ask your basis person to do this, but, um, this is how they'll end up doing that. They'll click on SSL client anonymous. Then you're going to have to download two different SSL certificates. So you're going to want to open up a web browser, go into minimize this as well. You need the certificate for github.com. So if you go to GitHub in the browser, this is Google Chrome. Click on the lock icon. Click on connection is secure. Click on certificate is valid. Go to details. Go to copy to file. And click next. You're going to want to choose this .cer, just the default here. And then choose a file name. I'm going to just save it on my desktop. I'm just going to call this one github.com. CER for the github.com certificate and export this certificate. Export was successful. Then we also want a certificate for api.github.com. So we're going to get this JSON here, but we just want the certificate so we don't need to worry about what the screen's showing us. Same steps as before. Go in, go to details, copy to file. Save this one. We'll go ahead and save this one on the desktop as api.github.com.cer. And then once these certificates have been exported to our desktop, we need to upload them in transaction S Trust. So we'll go back into our SAP, into S Trust. We'll click right here where it says import certificate. We'll choose our first one, github.com.cer. Click on OK. Click Allow. Then, oh, I'm in display mode. I need to be in change mode. I need to click. Oh, it's still in display. Change. I need to click Add to Certificate List. We'll see it's populated here for github.com. Then we want to import the other certificate for api.github.com. Click OK. Click Allow. Add to certificate list. And we see here both certificates have been added. Let's go ahead and save this. And so we don't have to transport this change. It must be done in each client. And so now, whenever we go into our Z about git, we're able to have the full functionality where we can create online repos, we can create offline repos, and uh, we can do everything that we need to to get started with ABAP Git. So I really appreciate you guys watching this uh, video. If you have any questions or issues, please feel free to leave a comment. Uh, my email is usually somewhere on my YouTube channel. So if you have a more personal question you want to ask, please feel free. Uh, thank you so, so much for watching. It's, it's honestly, every single video I make is completely at the suggestion of whatever you guys put in the comment section or email me about. So thank you so much. Um, if, again, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll get right back to you. Thanks for watching.